Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at seven different products and hacks that will change the dimension of your coloring book pictures. So without waiting, let's get into it. Ask this question fairly often because a lot of people see me using detail brushes. I use them for many different things from specifically blending with a blending medium. I use them to doing highlights. And up until this point, I never really give an answer as to which brand or what brush is my favorite. I have many brushes and I use them all for different reasons. And that was up until now. You've probably seen these in videos that I've done, these two brushes. They've been my latest detail brushes. When these go wonky, I just toss them and I get new ones. I found the detail brush that I will probably be using from now on, and it's neither of these. And for the first time, I'm going to be able to recommend a specific brush to you because this blew me away. I've never used an angle detail brush and this is the Princeton Select Angle Spot Detailer. And I bought it off Amazon. This blows away every detail brush I've ever used. Tiny bit on the tip. You can see how small that tip is, how firm it is. That is a big thing with me is I like it, a firm detail brush. And it often loses its firmness to me and starts to get... Um, wayward hair going and then once that starts the brush is no good look how detailed i can get this brush if i want to go smaller i can go micro fine look at the size of that um in comparison let's take the tip of a pencil here is the tip of a pencil so that you can compare in size the size of the dot. I need a line. I get a smooth, thicker line. I want a thinner line. I can go thinner. And why do I like this brush so much? Because unlike a normal detailed brush, my hand goes over the tip of the brush. I often have to crick my neck around to be able to see the end of the brush, but with the angled brush, you don't have to do that. I can see everything from the dot to the front. There is no learning curve. You use it like a regular brush. It didn't even feel weird. And there you have it. Definitely my favorite brush. And again, it's the Princeton Select Angle Spot Detailer. And I will leave that in the description. And this is my 10 out of 10 brush. Craft paint comes in different viscosities and thicker viscosity paints or heavy bodied paints, they make more puffy textured design. Thin paints like this make more of a flatter uh, design and soak down and spread more. And I'm going to add a little bit of baby powder, just a tinch. maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Then I'm going to add in a little bit of glue or Mod Podge. You can use PVC glue or Mod Podge. And I'm using probably about twice as much Mod Podge as paint. Um, you don't have to be that precise. You're just looking for the viscosity. And I'm going to mix that all up. Now, I want it to be a little bit thicker but that's pretty smooth. And I'm gonna put this in a bottle. I transferred it into a bottle and I did some dots so that they could start drying. And you could see how much taller these dots are because it's puff paint. I don't think it's good for fabrics because you can't wash it, but for anything you're doing crafts on, it's fine. Now, some of these dots are dry or getting there. 
You can then take the second color, add it on top, and look how high that sticks up. Then you can actually wait for that to dry and take a third one and stack it. And you have all these little pearls and little bits and pieces to put as jewelry in your books. Now imagine doing this with a gold paint or a silver paint and making jewelry in your coloring books three-dimensional. Here we have one of Hannah Cozone's books. And I get this question every once in a while. How do you do the little jewels and the little jewelry that are in books? Well, look at this. Your pearl necklace. You want to get your beads? Perfect. These bottles are extremely precisional. If you want to do, say, beads that are next to each other, you do every other bead, let it dry, and then go back and do the one that's next to it. This way they stay nice and round and puffy. And you can have a good time adding color all over the place. Now, this paint has no additive in it right now. There are plenty of mediums that you can add to it. This is just the Americana Art Deco. It's a good craft paint. The minute I saw this, I had to have it. There was just no stopping me. This globe of gorgeous iridescence was created by Mod Podge. And this is a spray and it's the iridescent acrylic sealer. It is beautiful. This is what that was originally. This is made out of like plaster Paris and it's like a stone for doing rock painting. And it turned into a three-dimensional globe. It looks like you could reach right into a different world and just grab a piece of the Milky Way that's made out of iridescent stars. It is so beautiful. This is the third project I've done with it. And just look how beautiful that is. And all it is is a seal or a spray can. That's the good news. The bad news is it's really hard to find. And I mean hard. It's backlogged on Amazon right now. Blix is out of stock until the middle of April. Michael's is only for pickup if you can find one that has it. And Hobby Lobby was out of it. So if you can find this stuff, I'm telling you, you there's just projects. Just spray everything. Your lamps, your tabletops, your kitchen cabinets. Just spray it all. This stuff is so pretty. Look at this. Last time, I promise. Just look at that globe, what it did to it. And this is plaster of Paris. Looks like glass. I actually have a whole video from years ago, and it has over 150,000 views on it for this hack. And I thought it was so good, and I've been using it a lot more lately, a lot more. And I've gotten a lot braver with it and experimenting with it. What you do is you take a little bit of mineral spirits, or in my case, I use the Dollar and Rooney Low Odor Thinner. And you dip your pencil tip into it. When I first made the first video, I was a little bit worried about pencil damage in the long run. But back then, I only had like one or two sets of pencils. I didn't have as many pencils that I can spare if one goes a little wonky on me. So I've gotten a little braver. And I do use this with, I have to admit, every pencil that I own. Let me start with a clean one. So here is the red just color with it, okay? This is a medium hand, and just put a couple of layers onto it. Now I'm gonna dip it into it, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Light-handed, see the color difference? Now, not only am I doing it with oil pencils, but I've gotten so um, addicted to uh, using this trick that I've been dipping my Prismacolors into it. It just adds a brightener to it, 
Within a few minutes, it's dry. The pencil goes back to the exact same condition as it was before I even tried it. And it works for every pencil from the cheapest pencils out there. If you want to get more out of them to, I even used my Luminous. I will admit I have dipped my Luminous once or twice into it. And they become very, very soft, but I get more of, see, I'm not even afraid to do it with my expensive pencils. I've done it with Holbein. I've done it, every pencil brand, and I have just about everything out there, and you get a lot of coverage. Now, even when you want to go light, you can. Even with this on it, you can go light. You just get a smoother lay down. And then you can go your medium hand. And now my heavy hand. perfectly smooth. The next product I want to show you has a five star rating on Amazon. And you know what? There isn't many products on Amazon that actually have five stars and hundreds of reviews. In fact, this product is so good that the only complaint that somebody had was that the jar was a little bit open when they got it. And it was only one out of hundreds. This is Gesso and it's by... Art Basics. I've just ordered the white so that I can mix them and have white, black, and gray. And I redid the video that I did the other day. And while I don't love it for cheap paper, I really, I don't. But it did way better than the, the Mont Marty. Now, the Mont Marty was also a clear textured gesso. And it is great for uh, spot touching, just like the brush and pencil touch up. That is what you would use for that. This is more of a background. I actually tested it like everybody said to do on both sides. It still crinkled my paper a bit because it's cheap paper. On regular artist grade paper, it did fine. And I really liked it. What I really liked also is how bright the colors became on it. And I really think that I'll be able to do some real, some really nice artwork using this. But there's one other thing on it that is like heaven. I'm gessoing my dot rocks with it. And just to show you how wonderful this stuff is. Here it is. Look how satisfying this is. One coat on Plaster Paris. Do you know how like in, like hard it is to get everything to soak into Plaster Paris? One coat. Look at this. Black. It feels so good to use too. It's like creamy and soft and shiny. Well, it's shiny to begin with, then it turns matte, but that's what it's supposed to do. It is so nice. I could finish nine, ten of these rocks in five minutes. One coat. Look how beautiful. Is that not gorgeous? Now, just to show you what it looks like when it's dry, here's a little one that I did for uh, that I'm going to paint up. It dries solid. Like, you can't scratch it off, which is better than anything I've been using. I love this. If they deserve their five out of five uh, Amazon rating, and if I can go in and rate this, I'd give it a 10 because this stuff is like heaven. Here's just a little sample of the small one. This was just for, you know, testing it out on, and I just love it. The next product I have is the Art Deco Triple Thick. Now, I have an idea for this that is going to be really cool in coloring books. 
but I wanted to show you this is a glaze and it goes on top of whatever you're painting and it leaves a very bright and shiny appearance and it's really thick gooey these long brushes are hard to use it goes on slightly like a bluish haze and then dries completely clear I'm gonna let that dry here we have Mariola Buttock's girl picture that I worked on a couple of videos back and this was just one that I was demoing on and I never threw it away imagine taking the triple thick and glazing over the eyes now when you look at the eyes there it is look at the eyes it kind of brings them to life and this will dry as shiny as it was when it was wet in fact the this is already dry and look how shiny it is dried really quick it's like touchable only a few minutes fantastic product 10 out of 10 in my eyes i found this hack on tiktok and it is brilliant 10 out of 10 everybody has their nibbies it's those short pencils that when they get down now this is a pretty big one i can put this into i could actually still write with this one but I've gotten my nibbies down really super low, especially if it's a color that I really, really like. And I never throw out my shorts or my nibbies because you never know when you need a little bit of something and you can still use it. Well, I found a hack for using nibbies that blows everything away. Now, I just happen to have these and not everybody has these i realized because when i did the star joy pencils these are the pencil colors that they sent me to go through and choose from i almost threw these away i don't need them anymore and i'm so glad i didn't because here is the pencil leads and i only need a piece for it now, what you want to do is you want to get your lead out of your nibbies. It's extremely easy to do. You take an X-Acto knife and it comes out very easily. My knife is not sharp anymore, but if I had a sharp knife, this would come right out. And what you are left with once you dig out the lead is this, okay? Take this, take your eraser, remove the eraser part. Now what you're going to need is a little tiny piece of your eraser. Now these are the soft erasers, uh, the putty erasers that everybody should have because they're like, if you're an artist, they're invaluable. Place your putty around the end of the nibby. Well, you can put it over here, cut it down to size. You could still use this. Um, in fact, this may even be too long. Place it in the same place you would put your eraser. Close it up, put it back into your eraser. Okay. Now you're working on a background and you're doing your circular strokes. Totally smooth blending and you don't have to bust your hand to do it. brilliant well that's it guys i will leave the links in the description as usual and i will see you guys in my next video take care bye bye